We welcome you to this broadcast of girls varsity basketball on NK Telco Sports. We're at Rushi Local Schools where the Botkins Trojans will take on the Rushi Raiders. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following sponsors. Keyhole Pizza, First National Bank, Precision Strip, Emerson Copeland, Carriage Works, Grand Lake Health, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Lincoln Electric Automation, Minster Bank, Pratt Industries, New Knoxville Supply, Wagner's IGA, Wilson Health, Winners Meats, The Jewelry Barn, and NK Telco, bringing you high school basketball. I'm Dave Helmstetter, and with me tonight, Brandon Coberman, and uh, a key Shelby County Athletic League matchup between these two teams. First, the Botkins Trojans greatly, they are a, how shall I say it, a pesky, feisty kind of team. Yeah. They rely on pressure, defense, and shooting the threes. They're six and three, only one league loss to Fort Lormy early in the season. Yeah, and they've lost their last two to Mrs. Sinwa and on Tuesday night to New Bremen. A balanced team in the lineup that averages. You have all the starters averaging between eight and six points points a game led by Camden Paul. Uh, you know, a solid team that's looking to get back on track against a very good Rushi team. And the Raiders, obviously, uh, on top in the Shelby County Athletic League with Fort Lormy at 4-0. So for them, it's to continue the march. And tonight may be a historic night for their head coach. Yeah, longtime Raider head coach Paul Bremigen, if the Raiders can win tonight, will get to win number 500. There's a coach up the road, too, in Carlos Siegel that's trying to get his, their 500 win, and they're looking to both be the 78th and 79th coaches in OHSA history to get win number 500. Uh, the Raiders looking to keep pace here in the Shelby County Athletic League, their last game before both teams' last game before Christmas. Uh, Raiders playing very well, only lost to, to uh, state-ranked Tri-Village. And again, a very veteran-led squad that's been battle-tested. These guys have been in tournament the past two years, so these teams are very familiar with each other. Should be a nice Shelby County Athletic League matchup today. And the, and the Raiders are coming off a solid win over a decent New Bremen team, 51-25, also another plus. Yeah, a game where they played really well. They, it was only 17-14 after one quarter, but they just really took that game over. Uh, really kind of running the Cardinals off the floor offensively and, you know, only allowed 11 points over three quarters of play. And we're just moments away from the start of tonight's game in our starting lineups. National Anthem just about to be played here. Raiders come into tonight's game 8-1 and one overall, 4-0 in league play. The Botkins Trojans 6-3 and 3-1. Three and three and I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. At Wilson Health, we're extending care beyond the walls of the hospital with resources designed to keep you in charge of your health. Our independence and connection to the community are unique in a world where big healthcare strives to act like corporations. Our tools may be the same, but we are different. We're neighbors, friends, and family who truly care about the people who live here. We call it caring without limits. 
and it's just the beginning of a whole new Wilson Health. And our starting lineups are up next. All brought to you by Emerson Technologies. Now, tonight's starting lineups. For the visiting Botkins Trojans, they averaging 49 points per game, uh, holding the opposition to 32 points a game. Their starters are Junior Camden Paul. Number three, a senior, Lydia Dietz. Number five, a junior, a Mul Mulaney Maurer. Number 10, another junior, Janelle Platfoot. And number 11, a senior, Kennedy Dosig. And they have three players, well, really, almost four players that average right at and around eight points per game. Paul, Dietz, Maurer, and Platfoot, all right in that same vicinity. Uh, Paul with 8.2 and Maurer with 8.4. Platfoot at 8.0. And Dietz at 7.0. Pitts comes off the bench with 6.2 points per game. And Dosik inside at 4.7 points. And our starting lineups now for the Rushi Raiders. And as we said, our starting lineup sponsor, Emerson Copeland, sponsoring tonight's starting lineups. I'm trying to work on an audio issue, I think. <laughs> man on the job is going to have to find the mic in here. There we go. So our starters, we got number three, C.C. Borchers. Number four, Ronnie Poling. Number five, Maya Monin. And number 13, Kate Sherman. And number 14, Arise Gubo. So it's Borchers, Poling, Monin, Sherman, and Gubo for the Raiders. Eight and one overall. Move on to our keys to the game brought to you by Keyhole Pizza first for the visiting Botkins Trojans. Talking to Coach Tyler Carson, he talked about guarding the Raiders from the three-point line. He really stressed the importance of offensive rebounding and, and patience as well against the taller Raider team. And grabbing the long rebounds off those potential missed three-pointers to not create second chances for Rushi. And for the home team, under head coach Paul Bremigan, Eight and one Raiders, the keys to the game for them. Coach Bremigen talk, talked about defending the three. Bakken's a very a smaller team, but they can shoot very well. They want to run, they want to get quality looks off their sets. So they didn't right there. And they wanted to eliminate unforced errors, which there's one right there to start the game. And one of the things that uh, Rushi, with the size inside that they have, Botkins uh, will have their hands full. Let's see what happens here. We're on our Botkins' first possession. Paul will have the basketball up across the timeline. Platfoot back over to Maurer. Inside Dietz. She'll get it to Paul. Back over the three by Maurer. Shot no good. Tipped back in by Sherman. And the Raiders will push it up court. Again, Bakken's in a zone. Not really surprised with that. They did it against New Bremen the other night. Came out in a zone, then flipped back to man-to-man. -to -man. Borchers back out front to Gubo. Over to the left side and Monin. Gubo will run from the point against Camden Paul. Right side it goes. Back out front to Sherman. Inside to Poling. They'll move it all the way around. Just keeping the basketball moving. Way over in the left corner is... Gubo, she'll move out. They're being really patient here early on. Trojans, yeah, they're in a man-to-man -man now. Oh, yeah. Little uh, changing defenses by the Trojans. Rushi reads it. Gubo will get it over to the left side and Borchers inside she goes. Shot no good, but she gets her own rebound. And with 6.22 to go on the first National Bank Think First scoreboard, Raiders go up two to nothing. Yeah, and kind of interesting they do flip for that man-to-man -man halfway through the possession there. 
And they're going to flip back. De they're going to mix up defenses here. Will Bakken throughout the course of this game. Over to the right side is Paul. Paul goes to the baseline, looks inside, trying to find Maurer, but it's a turnover for Botkins. Up court quickly, and the Raiders will return the favor. Dosik over to the right side. Paul, 15-footer, shot no good. Rebound, shot no good there by Dosik. And Botkins still looking for their first points. Polling off the glass. Ronnie Poling, averaging 7.7 .7 points per game. Gets her first bucket, and it's 4 to nothing. Raiders with the lead. Poling been a pre pleasant add-on for this Raider team this year. Borchers with the steal. Into the lane, she'll draw the foul. And Borchers, when she's out in the open court, she's one of the better players in the area. When she gets out there, she's got a full head of steam to that basket. It's really tough to stop her. 32 steals for Borchers on the campaign, averaging about 3.4 steals a contest. And she'll connect on the free throw, and quickly the Raiders are up as Delana Pitts will come in. And Dietz will go out. Borchers. 23 out of 37 now from the free throw line. A little better than 60%. Trojans. Looking at pressure from the Raiders. They got the double team, and there it is. Takeaway. It's going to come back to the Trojans quickly. Quick pass down inside. Shot up and in as Maurer will connect on the basket. And Botkins with 4.52 to go. First quarter action on the scoreboard. Foul will be on Dosik. Trying to take the ball away on the pass towards Sherman. Yeah. Interesting to see, again, it's, it's the one thing Coach Carson's really done is, is mixed up those defenses. You're not, know what you're, gonna, you're not knowing what you're going to expect from this Bakken's team. Pressure, zone, man-to-man, -man, you don't know. Sherman over to the left side. It goes to Gubo. Gubo guarded by Platfoot. Back out front it comes. Monin. Now Poling looks inside. There's Sherman. She'll post up. Pitts has a hand on the basketball. Slows her down. Ball tipped out. And here come Botkins. Three by Maurer. Rolls home. And it is six to five. Rushi with the one-point lead on the first National Bank Think First scoreboard. And that's exactly what Botkins needs is to get plays like that. The Raiders have the safety valve or their last player there pulling open. Just got to get one more rotation quickly, get the ball up ahead, and it would be an easy basket for the Raiders. But Bakkins does a nice job forcing a Raider turnover there. Under four minutes to go, first quarter. Mulaney Maurer with the basketball. She goes to the left side. Flat foot in the corner, back to Maurer. Out front to Dosik. Top of the key, top of the key, guarded by Poling. Maurer takes it inside to the baseline, back out front, pits into the lane. Over to the right side, open for the jumper, no good. That was Platfoot with the shot, and that would have given Botkins the lead. Raiders, Sporchers has it, goes inside to Sherman. They cannot connect, and got a whistle. Again, it seems like the Raiders are, cl are clearly saying we have the size advantage. They passed up on some good looks from the perimeter, and they're a pretty good three-point shooting team. Borchers, Monin, and Gubo, pretty nice three-point shooters. So they're really trying to emphasize kind of getting it in on the inside, but they've struggled getting good post-entry passes right there as they have four turnovers here in the first quarter. One-point lead for Arushi. Platfoot. She'll move into the lane. Pushes it to Kennedy, who takes it on the baseline. Puts the shot up and in. And Botkins, with 3.04 to go in the first quarter, has their first lead of the night. And a 7-0 run for the Trojans, too. Scott into the lineup for the Raiders. Mm -hmm. 
as is Kelby Dosick. Jana Metz, we saw her in the junior varsity game in for Botkins. Metz, very good rebounder. Stopping the action as Scott will inbound it. Gubo will have it. Scott is over to the right side. Borchers to the left. They look inside for Dosik, and Borchers will put the shot up. Battle for the rebound. It comes back down to Borchers. Gubo back over to Borchers. Dosik goes inside to Sherman. And that's going to be a foul on Sherman. Lower the shoulder into that contact. Doesn't have to necessarily be straight. She initiates that contact with her shoulder going low. Good call by the baseline official right there against Sherman. Bakken's doing a nice job taking away that post-entry pass for the Raiders because they clearly have the size advantage. The Raiders are going to have to make some adjustments here on how to get the ball on the inside. Bakken's had a lot of practice doing that against uh, Coldwater and... Uh... Riss Miller, the 6'5 senior that's going to University of Dayton. On the baseline, back out Platfoot, shot no good. Rims around and out, and the rebound comes down to Scott. Here come the Raiders. Dosix inside, Scott has it out above the arc. Poling comes out. Raiders work it to the left side, and Borchers going in. Shot no good, ball comes back to Dosik. She'll fire it back out to Gubo into the lane. Dosik short jumper, no good. Rebound inside. Shot doesn't fall by Poling. Battle for the rebound. Kind of a wild series of events there by both sides. Coach Tyler Carson wanted a lot of things and got nothing. It's just <laughs> wild there. <laughs> that was a wild exchange there. But a 7-0 run here for Botkins. Right now, you know, the Raiders were taking control earlier, but credit the Trojans fighting back here. Ever since they put on that press, they've, it's been all Trojans. Out front, Gubo over to Borchers in the wing. Inside is Poling, as is Dosik. Scott will have it. Looking down low, Paul almost had the steal, but Borchers has the ball. Gubo with it now. Scott's going to the corner. She'll come out and take it behind the arc. Pitts is on her. Back over to Gubo. Inside. Polling. It's going to be a jump ball. Raiders trying to go inside. And that time, uh, a jump ball. And that gives Botkins the basketball as Monin will return to the Raiders lineup. And that's the sixth Raider turnover as well compared to three for the Trojans. Bakken's doing a nice job forcing some Raider turnovers here. Dosik back out to Pitts in the front. Gets it to Metz. Metz looks inside. Dosik comes out, but the ball goes to Paul. Shot no good. Put it up left-handed, but it doesn't fall. Dosik with a rebound. Raiders go into their offense. They're trying to get it down low. It looks like Botkins back into a zone. Yep. Well, I think it's a zone. It is. Looks like it. We have a matchup. Shot from the wing, and Maya Monin with a big bucket, and that puts the Raiders back into the lead at 9-7. Yeah, and that's, a, and that's a good look. I mean, you're wide open. Take it. Monin's a good three-point shooter. Paul with the basketball. Ball tipped away by Borchers to the floor. Timeout. Raiders, they'll take a 30-second timeout. Great hustle by the Raiders, and Paul Bremigen gets that timeout, and the Raiders will maintain the basketball. And I think, I think too, when you, when you go against this zone defense, you're going to have to look, if you're the Raiders, trying to get some back screens, maybe getting some, your, your girls open good looks on the block. Bakkins is, is crashing down on everything. You got good shooters. You got Monin, Borchers, Gubo out there. Let it fly. You can make a couple of them. Monin makes the first one. That'll get Bakkins out of that zone defense and back into man-to-man, -man, which is what you want if you're the Raiders. So hit some shots. Prove that you can. They know that they can. So hit some shots. Get Bakkins out of that man-to-man -man is, is what Coach Bremigen needs needs to do. And it's what they were doing early, but they struggled and they 
got ice cold there for a while, but now they hit a shot and are up 9-7. to seven. All timeouts brought to you by Precision Strip, Raiders with the basketball. Coming up on the final seconds of this opening quarter play, Rushi with a two-point lead. Dubois' ball is going to be knocked out of bounds with 1.1 second to go. Watch a little tip play maybe for a Raiders, maybe try to get it to polling. It's going to go inside. That's going to end our first quarter of play. It's a good one. Shelby County Athletic League girls basketball. Our score, Rushi 9, Botkin 7. You're watching high school basketball on NK Telco Sports. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Kemmler Orthopedic Center is focused on a personalized caring approach to treat all aspects of orthopedics, including total joint replacement, shoulder reconstruction, stem cell injections, and more. Dr. James Kemmler and Jed Cooney, certified PA, are dedicated to providing the best orthopedic care in the Grand Lake region. Kemmler Orthopedic Center has offices located in Salina and Van Wert, along with extended evening hours. To schedule an appointment, call our office at 419-586-5760. Second quarter of basketball, got a good one here, 9-7, to seven, based on one quarter of play, and it'll be interesting to see if the Raiders can or will go inside, which you have to, you know, think that's probably the direction that Rushi will take. Again, depending on how, how Bakkins comes out and how the Raiders rotate the basketball, they'll look to to get there, but they know they can hit the three-pointer. They know they can hit it with those three girls that I mentioned earlier. Um, but Bakken's doing a very good job defending that inside. Here they go on the inside right now. Poling. Tried to take a charge. Poling will put it up and off the glass. Nice touch by the six-foot junior for Rushi. Four-point lead. Maurer back over to Dietz. Dietz looks inside, gets it to Dosik in the wing. Paul is down low trying to set that screen. Dosik will find Maurer off the glass and... Mulaney Maurer, very nice player, uses her left hand, cuts it to two points. She has seven. She's had 15 the other night against Bremen. Outside shot, Borchers open, but hits the back of the iron. Monin gets it inside to Dosix. Ball goes to the floor. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow will favor. Botkins. And again, uh, if you're Maurer, if you're Botkins, you've got to look to get the ball to Maurer. She's played played really well here early on, missed seven points. Maurer's 31% from behind the arc on the season, 15 out of 48. Overall shooting at 32% at 29 for 91, averaging 8.4 points per game. But she can light it up. That's going to be a turnover there. 14 turnovers is the Botkins average. As Sherman will return to the Raiders lineup as Dosik goes out. Six minutes and 45 seconds to go, as you can tell. On the first National Bank, think first scoreboard. Sherman, number 13, puts it on the floor, gets it to Borchers. Borchers out front to Poling, over to the left side. Scott for three off the front of the iron, takes the high bounce. Carly Scott had a pretty good look at that one, Brandon. Yeah, she did, and, and she's another one that can shoot the three. Again, just haven't been able haven't been able to get it on the inside of the Raiders. They've struggled with it. They struggled to get the ball and assert their their height. Bakken's doing a nice job taking away for how undersized they are. Ball is loose. That'll be a turnover by Botkins. Here comes Borchers. Pitts will knock it away, and it's going to go out of bounds. And it went off of one of the Raiders. Yep. As they were trying to keep it inbounds, 
So Botkins will have the basketball with 6 11 to go. And looks like the Raiders are going to apply some pressure here. They want to create some turnovers and some havoc on the offensive end because they're not getting ba baskets out of the regular sets. Flat foot. And Monin go to the hardwood floor. Reagan McFerrin into the lineup for Botkins. Raiders with the basketball. So they try to go inside and shot no good by polling. Trojans come away with it. Inside to Pitts, up against Sherman. Now double team back out. There's the three point shot by McFerrin. No good. And Raiders will have it. Got a newcomer into the lineup, number 23, Grace Holscher. First action for the Raiders. And the Raiders going to turn it over. McFerrin will have it as the Raiders come up with the defensive steal. Borchers behind the arc. Back inside pass, and there it goes. And Ronnie Poling. It's a great pass by Borchers to lead her to the basket to get her to open to her strong side and able to lead her to that basket. Botkins, McFerrin, over to Platfoot. Bauer runs the cut, pits with the basketball. Four-point Raider lead, big possession here for Botkins. Looking inside, there's Maurer right in front of the rim. Does she get the roll? No. Rebound comes down to Maurer, and it's going to be a jump ball as number four, Ronnie Poling, also had a hand in it. Raiders dominating the glass, 12-3. And as the Raiders kind of go to a smaller lineup for them right here. So I think the arrow actually favors Bach. I think the arrow, arrow favors the, the Trojans. They're going to go to the book. I actually do think the arrow, oh, there, we'll say it's Raider basketball. They'll, they'll look at the book there to confirm, so. Well, if you look, looks like it should be Urshi basketball. They'll bring it up court. Gubo, Holscher, back over to Poling. Left side, there's Gubo open. Good look and knock it home. Reese Gubo. Good looking shot. 41% three point shooter coming into tonight's game. That's number 20 on the season for Gubo. Flatfoot in trouble and she'll draw the foul on Poling. You know, just kind of got behind her and, and whacked down there as Platfoot will go to the line. Bakken's really looking for someone outside Mulaney Maurer to score for them. The only other person that has scored for them is Kennedy Dosek. Janelle Platfoot, she'll hit the free throw. Platfoot, 9 out of 15 on the season. As Sherman comes back in and Poling will catch a breather. Second free throw, also good, and got a full timeout by Botkins with 4.03 to go in the first half. Our score, Rushi 16, Botkins 10. You're watching High School Basketball on NK Telco Sports. We are here. And here. And here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Unpack your potential with a career at Pratt Industries. Working at Pratt Industries is more than a job. It's a sustainable career. Pratt Industries to me is a job. It's, it's my career. It's the way I put food on my table, but I love what I do. We offer competitive pay, excellent benefits, and opportunities for career advancement. 
To apply, visit careers.prattindustries.com. Rushi will have the basketball after the timeout, and the Trojans are going to apply some pressure. Sherman will have it, and the Raiders break the Botkins press. Out front it is to Monin. Gubo will handle it. Inside it goes to Sherman. Gubo out front. She'll shoot the three. It's sh short, and Pitts will grab the rebound. Pitts leads Botkins with 7.8 rebounds per game, and she takes it the length of the court and scores. 16 to 12, our score. Olsher gets it to Borchers. Borchers off the glass, up and in. CC Borchers. Scoring at a 13.6 points per game clip. Lifts her team into a five point lead with that basket. Paul looking inside for Maurer, but Raiders are going to get a timeout as Holscher almost lost it. They'll keep a 30-second timeout, and we'll keep it right here. And all timeouts brought to you by Precision Strip. I'd like to remind you that tonight's basketball action here on NK Telco, you can see it again on NK Telco Channel 3 or in HD on Channel 503. Tuesday, January the 3rd at 7 p.m. And Saturday, January the 7th at 2 p.m. That's Tuesday, January the 3rd at 7 p.m. And Saturday, January the 7th at 2 p.m. You can also watch more games on demand through YouTube, Facebook, and at nktelco.com backslash sports. Raiders will retain possession of the basketball. And Kubo will bring it up court. We go under three minutes to go here in first half action. Borchers, ball tipped away there by Pitts. And if the Raiders can get in the middle of that press, they can get the ball to Borchers. Like I said, Borchers is, and they're going to over, that ball did hit off Borchers. That's actually a good overturn there uh, by the official. But when Borchers gets that ball in the open floor, that's, that's where the Raiders can really kind of dissect this Bakken's press and let her with full head of steam to the basket. Ball tipped out of bounds there by Poling. Pass intended for Platfoot. Platfoot will inbound it for Botkins. Maurer will have it out front. Back over to Platfoot. Platfoot looks inside as Pitts tries to set the screen. Dosick into the lane. Shot doesn't go, and the rebound will come down to Borchers. She looks left for Scott. It's going to be tipped away by Platfoot. And Kelby Dosick will come back into the lineup for the Raiders. Monin tosses it all the way back in to Gubo. She'll go into the lane on Paul. Rebound, Dosick, shot no good. Up and in is Poling. Some Poling sticking with it right there. And a nice play by Poling to stick it in for eight points now for her. Raiders just pounding it away inside. Paul for three. Got it. Camden Paul. Yeah. Nice shot. She's got her first basket. The lead scorer for the Trojans. A little over eight points a game. Raiders lead at four. Shot no good by Borchers. It's going to be Botkins basketball. Trojans... Out of, uh, they shoot 200, they've shot 211 threes coming into <laughs> tonight's game out of 434 shots. Jeez, um, so you're they, looking at they, about. They've only shot four, four tonight. That's close, close, not quite, but bordering on 50%. Pitts move inside, doesn't fall. It's going to be a foul. Let's see who it's on. It should be on Platfoot. Yeah. And again, they've, they've let him play this half. Only only six fouls called in this whole half. 
So they've let him play, which is good for Bakken's because they don't go very deep in their bench. They only go about six deep. So that's good for Coach Carson. And you, know, you can get a little sigh of relief there. You know, it can make him it can make him put on this press, which the Raiders have been struggling with, frankly, and they turn it over right there. Pitts with a steal. Be fouled by Monin. Pitts has got some pretty good quickness. And she'll go to the free throw line. Elena Pitts, 53% free throw shooter. 121 to go, first half action. Pitts does not get the roll on that one. Second free throw is good. Urshi with a three point lead. Kind of gone flat here in quarter number two. Yeah. Monin. Back over to Borchers. Dosik. There's Gubo. She's open. Shot doesn't go. Platfoot had her hands on it, but comes back to pulling. Yeah, that's a good look in I mean, that's a good look in transition. I, I, I'm not going to pass up. Reese Gubo is wide open. You said she shoots over 40%. I let her. I let her take that shot. But anytime pulling to touch the ball on the inside, she scored. You got to look to get her more looks here if you're the Raiders. Looking for her right now, and she'll push it back out to Gubo. Gubo will handle it and take it to the top of the arc. Over on the right side is Borchers. Dosey going inside to Poling. Shot no good. Just a little bit out of position there. Couldn't quite hit it off the glass. Outside open shot is Lydia Dietz, and Dietz will connect. And Bakken's playing very well. Inside, polling shot no good. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll be Botkins basketball. That was Dietz's 57th three-point shot of the Jeez. season. <laughs> they, like, they like to throw it up. She's shooting about... 27%, well, a little bit better than that after the made three. So Botkins can take the lead as we close the final seconds. And there's going to be a block this time. It'll go against Borchers. Her second. It's a big foul right for the half. And Botkins, you have the arrow going into the third quarter. You need to hold for this last shot here. Inbounds pass. Maurer, clock at 10 seconds. Gubo on her, Maurer into the lane, pushes it open to Dietz. Shot no good, it's gonna bounce back to Dosig. Gubo, last shot of the half, off target. Borchers just misses one. And the first half of action is over, and we've got a good one here at Rushi. Our score. The Rushi Raiders 20, the Botkins Trojans 20. You're watching high school basketball on NK Telco Sports. Are you looking for a rewarding career? Lincoln Electric Automation in Coldwater and Fort Loramie supplies top-of-the-line automation systems to manufacturers. Lincoln Electric Automation routinely develops its team through hiring and by offering advanced technical training. We understand that every employee matters and every role contributes to the success of our business. We offer advancement opportunities, competitive wages, and benefit packages. Visit LincolnElectric.com and get on track to a better career and a a better future. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Whether you do business from a corner store or a corner office, there is one asset your business cannot do without. The internet. Everything from sales and marketing, training and shipping, PR, HR, and R&D, your business relies on a fast, reliable, and secure connection. And now, it's more important than ever to partner with an internet provider you can trust. Get Flight Fiber for Business, backed by local tech support from NK Telco. Call today. 
Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Here at halftime, Botkins and Rushi knotted up at 20 all and Trojans really coming on strong there in the uh, latter stages of the second quarter and uh, yeah. uh, knotted this one up for a while there. Looked like the Raiders were going to take over, take control, but Botkins in, they're a feisty, scrapping team and yeah. they just don't, they, don't they, they stay in these games and uh, they hit some baskets and yeah. suddenly it's a tie game. Let's take a look at our halftime numbers. And first for the Trojans, 7 of 18 from the field, 2 of 4 from beyond the arc, 6 boards, 9 turnovers, 3 of 4 from the line. For the Raiders, they were 8 of 20, 3 of 9 from beyond the arc, 18 boards, 11 turnovers, and 2 of 2 from the charity stripe. Individual scoring for Bakken's, they were led by Mulaney Maurer with 7, 4 from Kennedy Dosek in the and then three apiece for Delana Pitts, Lydia Dietz, and Camden Paul, and two from Janelle Platfoot for Rushi. Leading them was Ronnie Poling with eight, and then six points from CeCe Borchers, three points from Maya Monnen and Reese Gubo. And, and like I said, Raiders are the favorite in this game, but Botkins has played so well. The Raiders dart off to that 6-0 lead. You're like, are they going to take control? Coach Carson made some nice adjustments. I applaud the Trojans for what they've done in the first half. And they've, they've come out and played really well. Now the pressure's on the Raiders. You know, I know you got, the, got in mind that Coach Bremerton, if they win tonight, it's, it's win 500. But more importantly, they need to keep pace in the Shelby County League race and cannot afford to lose a game like this. So the Raiders got to make some halftime adjustments and on better post-entry pass. Getting the ball on the inside here should be a very fun second half, Dave. Maurer has the basketball, and Botkins goes into their offense. Camden Paul... Wants to go inside. There's the running right-hander, and it'll roll home. And with 7.42, and on the first possession of the second half, Botkins takes a two-point lead. And they go right back into that half-court pressure, too. Polling up and in, and we're tied. And that's how you break it right there. Polling with double figures now. Raiders worked that one beautifully. Got the easy bucket. Maurer out front. Gubo will be on her. Dosik is going to pick up the basketball to the corner. There's Dietz for three. And Sherman will grab the rebound of that errant three-pointer by Dietz. Interesting. Raiders 18-6 eight, to six rebound advantage in the first half and still tied at halftime. Monin shot no good. Maurer is going to run a break over to the left side. Paul for three. Shot no good as Borchers just got a hand in her face at the right time. Raiders will hang on to the basketball and bring it up court. Borchers back over to Poling. Looks inside to Sherman. Sherman goes to the other side. Gubo looking for Poling. Poling off the glass. It doesn't go home. And we've got a foul. And it gets on Janelle Platfoot. Yeah. That's a nice adjustment by the Raiders right there. They run a back screen. They are really telling Kate Sherman, you're getting absolutely nothing. They run a nice little back screen there for pulling a nice little disguise, and it forces a foul. Again, that's a, another thing that's, that's favored Bockets. Not many foul co fouls called in the first half. They don't have a very deep bench. That plays in Bakken's favor, and they can be a little more aggressive, which has helped them out a lot. I think that foul was on Maurer, number five, and not... Platfoot as polling steps to the free throw line. 46% on the season. Makes the free throw there. Polling with what, 11 points? Yep. Paul. Back over to, to Dosik. Dietz to the baseline, and Paul shoots it back out to the corner, and Dosik. Hits the front of the iron. Borchers with the Rushi rebound up to Gubo. One point Raider lead. That was a good possession by Bakken's dribble drive. Try to get someone open. That's a good look. It's a good possession by Bakken's even though they didn't make the shot. 
Sherman over to the right side. Gubo will shoot the three. As they like to say, nothing but nylon. <laughs> It was a very good shot from Gubo. She's got two three-pointers. She's been doing that for three years now on varsity. Big three by Gubo. Let's see if the Trojans can counter. Maurer. She does. Mulaney Maurer knocks a three home, and it's a one-point game. And talk about good three-point shooters. Mulaney Maurer's done it since her freshman year. Very, very good shot. Sherman. Out front, Paul on her. How about that? Yeah. A little bit of a height disadvantage. And you got to look to get her the ball. you got to see that right away if you're Rushi. And not in a sea of defenders, but it somehow works. There it is. <laughs> Boy, they have three Botkins defenders suddenly saw that mismatch. And two others came along to help. But they get it inside to Sherman. And it's a three-point Rushi lead as Sherman gets the basket. Pitts dumps it over to Maurer. Dietz. From the corner, shot no good. Pulling with a rebound. Borchers, it's going to be a block there on Dosik. That'll be her second. Might not be a bad idea for the Raiders if they get, kind of take that half-court press off. Just go back and play it straight man. Uh, they're not getting the turnovers that they want. What they're trying to do is, is they, they really struggled scoring out their sets in the first half. And what they're trying to do is to get fast break points, but they're not getting the turnovers necessary uh, to really compensate for you running that half-court pressure. C.C. Borchers at the line, knocks it home. And the lead is four points, 29-25. Coming up on four and a half minutes to go, third quarter action. Platfoot. Steel, Mon or steal by Scott. Feeds Walked. Borchers yep. inside, but took the extra step. Yeah. She didn't get a, a very good pass. It kind of caught her unsuspectingly. So that's that's tough. Even though that's a turnover right there, it wasn't a very good pass from Scott. Put her in a good position there. Mets into the lineup for Botkins, and Camden Paul will also return. She'll toss it into Maurer. Pitts will take the ball and run point. Goes to Paul. Back over to Maurer. Metz. Paul is open. Shot a little bit too strong and Borchers with a rebound. Gubo. Back over to Borchers inside. There's Dosik off the glass. Big bucket as Kelby Dosik. Yep. A couple of Raiders that have not scored in the first half score here in the third quarter and Kelby Dosek and Kate Sherman. And Botkins has fired up six three-pointers this third quarter. They fired up four the whole first half, Dave. Paul with the basketball. Pitts over to the right side. They'll get it to Dosik. And the wing is Maurer. Shot doesn't go. Metz will get the rebound. Pushes it back out to Dosik. Shot short. Scrap for the rebound, and it'll come down to Carly Scott, 5'9", junior, with a rebound. Gubo across the timeline. Delena Pitts on her. Battle inside between Dosik and Metz. Gubo looks inside, gets it open. Look to Scott and Carly Scott. Boy, that might be one of the biggest shots of today's yeah. game. And the Raiders are 5 of 5 from the field. But if you're Bockets, why is your offensive identity changing? Why are you chucking up all these threes now? You, you, you're going away from what's got you in this game. The Raiders are starting to hit shots, and we got a timeout on the floor. 2.49 to go. Third quarter, a score. Rushi 34, Botkins 25. You're watching high school basketball on NK Telco Sports. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. At Wilson Health, we're extending care beyond the walls of the hospital. 
with resources designed to keep you in charge of your health. Our independence and connection to the community are unique in a world where big healthcare strives to act like corporations. Our tools may be the same, but we are different. We're neighbors, friends, and family who truly care about the people who live here. We call it caring without limits, and it's just the beginning of a whole new Wilson Health. Botkins with the basketball. They find themselves down by nine here with 2.49 to go. Paul will inbound it. And Mara will have it. The Raiders have scored 14 points here in the third quarter. They only scored 20 the whole first half. They're 5 of 5 from the field, including 2 of 2 from beyond the arc. Paul will have it. Looks into the lane. There she comes. Running right-hander. Shot no good. And Sherman will clear the rebound. Scott off the glass, and she'll score. Scott with five in the third quarter. She's been a pleasant addition back to the Raiders, was battling an injury earlier in the year. Much needed depth piece for Coach Paul Bremigen. Maurer gets it to Platfoot. Maurer back over to Metz. Metz goes into the lane, back over to Paul. Pitts handling the basketball. Raiders doing a good job keeping them out, too. Yeah, you just got to stay in Another front. You got to communicate on the exchanges is the biggest thing. Maurer. Under two minutes to go on the first National Bank Think First scoreboard. Paul shot no good, and Monum will grab the rebound. Three happy. It's it's shooting them out the game, Dave. Scott will Scott will score. I know Carly Scott's having a pretty good third quarter. 38-25. Seven points in the third quarter as well. Bauer over to Metz. Pitts out front. Ball goes to Maurer in the corner. She'll move inside the arc. Looks inside. She'll pull it back out as we come up on a minute to go here in the third quarter. Big quarter for the Rushi Raiders. Really yeah. have come out and played some outstanding basketball. Pitts into the lane, and foul is going to be on Sherman. She was out of position with her body right there, straight up but just out of position. That's going to send Delena Pitts to the free throw line. She'll shoot two. This is where you hate being a referee because you know whatever side you're going to get that call to, you're going to get, you're going to get, you're going to get flack no matter what. But I, I do think that's a good foul call right there. Substitutes got a host of subs for both teams. Again, Rushi seven to seven from the field. Bakins has shot. Eight three-pointers this third quarter when they shot four the whole first half. It's, it's, a, it's an 18-5 to five difference this quarter for the Raiders. Platfoot will inbound it. Dietz goes to the corner, pits out front. Platfoot will get it to Kennedy Dosick. And yep. I believe it was out of bounds. Yeah, she... She, yeah, she used the, the out of bounds as, as just running out there. She's got to en enter back in. That's actually a good call there by the official. You do not see that very often, no. that's for sure. Monin has it, looks inside for Dosik. Out front it goes to Poling. Raiders, 35 seconds. Dosik banging down there with Platfoot for positioning. Jayla Shappy into the lineup for the Raiders. She has the basketball. Out front it comes to Dosik. Over in the wing is Borchers. She'll handle the basketball. Watch for an isolation here for Borchers if they can get anything clean for her here as Bremigen wants a timeout. Paul Bremigen takes the timeout with 15.4 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Full timeout. Let's take a break as well. Our score, Rushi, 38 Botkins, 25. You're watching high school basketball on NK Telco Sports. Carriage Works has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. Carriage Works thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top of the line technology. Carriage Works now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. 
Carriage Works has a brand new top of the line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for Carriage Works. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Kemmler Orthopedic Center is focused on a personalized caring approach to treat all aspects of orthopedics, including total joint replacement, shoulder reconstruction, stem cell injections, and more. Dr. James Kemmler and Jed Cooney, certified PA, are dedicated to providing the best orthopedic care in the Grand Lake region. Kemmler Orthopedic Center has offices located in Salina and Van Wert, along with extended evening hours. To schedule an appointment, call our office at 419-586-5760. All timeouts brought to you by Precision Strip. Rushi takes the break with just 15.4 seconds to go here in quarter number three as Raiders looking to score in this perhaps final possession of the third quarter. Shappy inbounds it to Dosik inside, pulling off the glass. Nice. That's a great design out the timeout to get an isolation for Ronnie pulling and get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Dosik back out to Dietz. She'll fire it up. Shot no good. And rebound comes down to Platfoot, but that's our third quarter score as the Raiders come alive with 20 third quarter points. Our score, Rushi 40, Botkins 25. You're watching high school basketball on NK Telco Sports. We are here and here and here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Unpack your potential with a career at Pratt Industries. Working at Pratt Industries is more than a job. It's a sustainable career. Pratt Industries to me is a job. It's, it's my career. It's the way I put food on my table, but I love what I do. We offer competitive pay, excellent benefits, and opportunities for career advancement. To apply, visit careers.prattindustries.com. Hot shooting Rushi with a 15 point lead as we move into the final eight minutes of play. And boy, let's take a look at some numbers here for the Raiders. Rushi, I have him unofficially as 8-8 eight eight in the third quarter, 2-2 two two from beyond the arc. Don't know if my stats are 100% accurate, but Bakken served eight three-pointers that quarter. They were 2 of 11 from the field. So that's the big difference here. So the Raiders scored 20 points that quarter to Bakken's five, matched their first half output. Do want to make a special mention to someone that's listening to the broadcast out here, Denny Monin. Um, Longtime Raider fan. Um, know he's going through some things right now and just uh, know he's listening to the broadcast right now. So, Denny, if you're listening, we're, we're glad you're listening here on NK Telco Sports. And anyway, hope to see you here at the gym watching some games here soon enough. And Kate Sherman connects on a 15 footer. And the lead now goes to 17. Boy, a couple of shots from the outside yeah. like that are really spelled problems. There's a late foul. Yeah, reach there. When you get the when the hand gets intermixed right there, it, it, they're going to call that foul more times than not. And they've really let them play, to be honest. They haven't called a whole lot of fouls. I mean, which, like I said, has been played to Bakken's favor. Just the Raiders have shot really, really well this second half. Still looking for that first miss. That's about as good as you can get, unofficially, of course. But nonetheless... It indicates the Raiders are shooting very, very well here in the second half. One thing they did, too, is they had 11 turnovers that first half, only won that third quarter. That helps, too. More possessions, more shots. And, and like, they ran a set for Ronnie pulling out that timeout. They got a one-on-one -on -one with a clear size advantage. That's stuff that's working for them, and that's why they dominated that third quarter. Looking inside, pulling will have it. Shot no good. Rebound will come down to Pitts. Across the timeline comes Delena Pitts out of bounds off of polling and inbounds pass coming up from Lydia Dietz. Bauer out front. Yeah. 
And Bakken's going to run a little open post action here. Means nobody in the post. Their five guards kind of moving and cutting here in the wing. Gubo will have the steal. Up court quickly. Borchers puts it on the floor. Turnaround jumper. Doesn't go. Gets the rebound. Puts it back up and in. Nice effort by CC Borchers. Yeah, just stuck with it there. Might have got away with an over-the-back foul. But she puts it in, and she's just a gamer. She's going to be one that's going to be a first-team all-league selection, if not maybe even the player of the year. Lead at 19 points. Ball back over to Pitts. Wants to get into the lane. Gets it back over to Paul. Paul to the baseline. Guarded there by Borchers. And we've got a timeout. Botkins, he'll take a 30-second timeout. I'd like to remind you that all timeouts tonight all brought to you by Precision Strip. Also, NK Telco Sports and its sponsors would like to invite you to watch replays of tonight's high school varsity basketball. It'll be on NK Telco Channel 3 or in HD on Channel 503 Tuesday, January the 3rd at 7 p.m. And Saturday, January the 7th at 2 p.m. Replay times again. Tuesday, January the 3rd at 7 p.m. And Saturday, January the 7th at 2 p.m. Those are all after all of the football games that you're going to watch <laughs> through the end of the year and into the first couple days of January, Brandon. I'm ready for baseball, Dave, but if I can watch the NFL until February and Ohio State till about Martin Luther King weekend, I'll be happy. You'll be a happy guy. <laughs> so will a lot of people in this state. Botkins will have the ball. They take the timeout trying to set up a play to get a good shot. They're one and nine shooting that three now, Dave, in the second half. That makes them three of 13 for the ball game. Dosik back out to Pitts. End of the lane. Tipped away there by Borchers. It's great help side defense by Borchers. Slid over, just got that hand in there and ticked it away from Pitts. You know, took her off course there and made everyone scramble for the ball. Botkins, 540 to go. Trying to get some offense together. Find that magic that had him in a 20-20 tie. Paul looking for Dosik inside. It's going to be taken away. Yeah, they're letting them play. I mean, it's been a physical game for really, especially for girls basketball. It's been a physical game here tonight. Mauer into the lane. Left-handed shot. No good. Sherman with a rebound. And Scott takes it to the hoop and they'll draw the foul. Scott's had a really nice second half, had seven points in that third quarter. Like I said earlier, she come back from an injury that had nagged her during the volleyball season. And she's come back and she's played, you know, really nice, even though she missed the free throw there. It, it, that depth that's needed, but Simone put off out for maybe the season. Uh, the Raiders need them if they want to go where, where they want to go and get to the regional tournament and have a say in getting to the state Final Four. Um, you know, but Bakken's, you know, Bakken's going to be in the same sectional um, as them come tournament time. I don't think we'll be discouraged by some of the results tonight. They played with them here in the first half. Scott comes up with a Gubo back over to the right side and Borchers. Scott has it in the wing. Maurer will guard her. Sherman out front. Gubo back over to Scott. That's been her shot. A little bit short that time. Bounces back to Sherman up. Off the glass, it's short. Scott grabs the rebound. Gubo has it back out to Scott in the wing. Pitts will come out a little bit closer this time. Sherman thought about it. Back over to Scott. Borchers. Raiders trying to get it inside. That time, pass to Poling tipped away. And Botkins with four minutes and 20 seconds to go. Looking to score. Maurer goes inside. A little bit out of position. Slow getting up. Borchers to the hoop. Shot no good. Sherman up no good. 
Poling with the rebound up and in, and Ronnie Poling with the basket. And the Raiders just dominating this rebounding advantage. Right now, it's this half, it is 16 to 3. Rebounding advantage for the Raiders. Poling with 13 points. Double teamed by the Raiders. Dosick gets it over to Pitts. 15 footer. Shot is good. And Elena Pitts with the made basket. It's a good move off the dribble by Pitts. She's really quick. Love her first step. Sherman. Gets it back out to Gubo as we come up on the three-minute mark. 19-point lead for the Raiders. Solid second half of play by Rushi. Over to Gubo. Gubo puts it on the floor. Feeds polling. She's double teamed, but there's a reach by Pitts. Yeah. That's a that's a good drive by Gubo. Polling's got to be ready for that because when you take that to the short corner, if you pick that up and she's in trouble, you got to be there to catch that ball and to lay it in right there. Monin will inbound it back into Borchers. Goes inside to Sherman, post move, shot doesn't go. Rebound, Dosik. Paul with it. Pulls it back out over to Dosik. Under three minutes to go, as you can sell it, see on that first National Bank Think First scoreboard. Foul situation. Three for the Raiders, five for Botkins. Dietz into the lane. Paul is open for the three, and she'll knock it home. Yeah, and this is what you need in Botkins if he were in the third quarter, not this late in the fourth quarter, to hit some of these shots that they're hitting right now. Raiders go back into their offense. Borchers guarded by Pitts. Monin will have it. Looks inside at the cut by Sherman. Dosik will come back out front. Number 23 is Holscher into the lineup. Botkins trying to get that steal. Borchers into the lane, running right-hander, and Pitts will draw the foul. Raiders get a nice nice screen up there for Holscher. Borchers, though, has the ability in that set play right there to take that to the basket if she wants to, and she had it on her right hand, her dominant hand, and she takes it to the basket and gets fouled. Borchers will step to the line. Connects on the first one. And she can go into double digits, I believe, with a made free throw here. Correct. Free throw drops. She has 10. Her average is 13 plus. She'll catch a breather with 1.55 to go, and it might be, not sure if that'll be the last time we see her or not. I would guess. And they got, Raiders got a JV player, Addison Chappie, in there now. Comfortable 18-point lead for the Raiders. Broke open a 2020 halftime score. Into the lane goes Maurer, back to Dosik. Maurer, left-handed shot, no good, a rebound. Comes down to Addison Shappy. Pitts on her. And Pitts will tip the ball out of bounds. Lacey Flippo will come into the lineup for the Raiders. Clock at a minute 12. First National Bank think first scoreboard. And Raider head coach Paul Bremigen going to get that 500th career win, Brandon. Yeah, and, and like I said, too, you know, leader all time in Shelby County Boys League history in wins. And let's come over to the girls' side as Holscher puts in that shot. And 
brought the finishing touches. He's won a lot of ball games. I've seen him win his 300th and 400th game, and I was a little bit younger, obviously, but you know he's been here for a long time, and he deserves it. Pitts will hit the bucket, and that's a three, so it's 50 to 33. Up court comes Addison Shappy. Over to Grace Holscher, dumps it off to Dosik. Shot doesn't go, and Kennedy Dosik will grab the rebound for Botkins. Paul up court. Shot no good there by Dietz. Ball on the floor. Paul will pick it up into the final seconds of this one. Back over to Maurer, into the lane, back out to Dosik. She'll take the shot, no good. And Kelby Dosik with a rebound, and Addison Shappy will walk it up court. And Arushi head coach Paul Bremigen gets number 500. Congratulations to the coach. Quite a milestone. 18 point difference in this one. 50 to 32, our score. And uh, we're going to keep it right here. As we find, uh, tally up our final stats. At this time, and there will be a presentation, which will. Coach Bremigen going to get the. Uh, Rushi coach Paul Bremingen gets the game ball, special plaque, special recognition here tonight in front of the very appreciative hometown crowd here in Rushi and quite a career accomplishment, Brandon. Yeah, it's only the 78th coach in Ohio high school athletic history to achieve that. He might not, he might get his recent uh, he might get the most recent coach to get 500 wins kicked off here soon. Coach Carla Siegel from fellow Shelby County School Fort Laramie is going for 500 wins tonight too. I don't know if you've ever had the same night two schools from the same conference get a co coaches with 500 wins. It's a pretty unique. Um, you got to be coaching for a long time. That's an average of about 13, 14 wins a season. So um, you know anyone that's coached at, at varsity at any level knows what it what it takes. You know, it, it's not easy. You're spending a lot of time away from your family. You know, I've coached high school sports. I know many people listening have coached high school sports. You spend a lot of time away from your family. You're out there. You're scouting. You're you're running practices. Uh, you're, you're getting ready for your next game, whatever. In the offseason, you're putting in workout with shootouts in the summer. You're putting in all this time 
and, and these are the times that it pays off, you know. Uh, many, you know, I've I've been in here and seen many of Coach Bremigen's wins. Um, you know, I've seen I remember seeing 300. I remember seeing 400. I remember seeing winning multiple district championships, uh, taking that team back to state in 2002 that lost to Delphi St. John's in the state finals. Uh, Coach Coach Bremigen is is a Rushi legend and, and a Shelby County legend at that. Also, the Raiders golf coach as well, and has had many successes coaching on the golf course as well. So. Again, well-deserved in, in, in the Raiders here taking a look at our final stats now. Uh, Bakken's is, was 12 of 38 from the field. They were 5 of 16 from beyond the arc, but just hit a cold stretch in the middle of that third quarter uh, that really just put them behind, behind the eight ball. 11 rebounds, 13 turnovers, 4 of 8 from the charity stripe. The Raiders shooting for 20 of 41, 5 of 12 from beyond the arc, 38 rebounds, and 14 turnovers, and 5 of 8 from the free throw line. Big night here in Rushi, as you can see, or hopefully you can see, the uh, all the players in the uh, varsity and the junior varsity posing with Coach Paul Bremigen for uh, a photo. And uh, big night for for the coach and a lot of folks out there right now congratulating from the community and. Uh, as you summed it up very, very well, Brandon, how many doesn't happen very often. It happens most likely twice in one night, but uh, definitely a, a major milestone for Coach Bremigen and our congratulations to him for a great season so far and a, definitely a successful career on, yeah. the, on the hardwood. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors here tonight, Keyhole Pizza, First National Bank, Precision Strip, Emerson Copeland, Carriage Works, Grand Lake Health, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Lincoln Electric Automation, Minster Bank, Pratt Industries, New Knoxville Supply, Wagner's IGA, Wilson Health, Winter's Meats, Jewelry Barn, and NK Telco. I'll bring you tonight's game. Also like to thank uh, Burke Petroleum, Chill Tech LLC, Cy Schwedeman Incorporated, Dickman Supply, Hometown Opportunity, Hillsman Automotive, Park National Bank, Securecom, and St. Henry Bank. And, of course, we have our player of the game brought to you by NK Telco. And player of the game tonight, let's see. Ronnie Poling. Sounds like a winner to me. And I, I think she's racked up a few of these this year, and she deserves it. You could, I think you could have went a few ways. Uh, Carly Scott had a really nice third quarter. CeCe Borchers had a great game. But, but Poling, overall, the difference on the inside, again, her and Scott helped lead that that Raider charge in the third quarter. They matched their first half output in the first or in the third quarter. That was the difference there. It was a twenty to five difference scoring in the third quarter. And the, the Raiders pick up a big Shelby County win. Uh, they don't play in the Shelby County until January. And who unless do they have the Fort Laramie Redskins? Both teams stand up five and zero through the first round robin. They're going to duke it out to see who's going to be the top of the the league after one round and. You know, it, it might come down to there's going to be a game, you know, here at Rushi in February, and it's, it's looking more or less like it might come down to that final game between those two schools. Yes, yeah, some great basketball all on here at NK Telco Sports. Raiders will move on. They're going to play Tuesday against uh, Versailles, and then, or excuse me, that's Botkins will play at Versailles on Tuesday, and then on Thursday, the 29th, They'll be at home against Anna before moving on to the MAC leader in Parkway after the first of the year. The Raiders, on the other hand, they're going to move into uh, a holiday classic at Covington, the Buccaneer Holiday Classic, on Wednesday and Thursday of next week before uh, back into Shelby County Athletic League action on Thursday, January the 5th at Jackson Center. So I'd like to remind you, replays of... Uh, Tonight's game can be seen on NK Telco Channel 3 or in HD on Channel 503. Tuesday, January the 3rd at 7 p.m. and Saturday, January the 7th at 2 p.m. You can also watch more games on demand through YouTube, Facebook, and at nktelco.com backslash sports. Final score from Rushi, the Raiders 50, and the Botkins Trojans 33. I'm Dave Helfsetter, and with me tonight, Brandon Coverman. You have been watching high school basketball on NK Telco Sports.